Hi, I'm Lori Owsley from the Board of Gardens Buffalo Niagara, and I'm really happy today to be bringing us some videos um, from Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. They will be talking about um, their native plants guide, um, how to plant trees, and also how to install um, rain barrels. All three, very important, and very important to the health of our gardens, the health of our waterways, and the health of our local ecology. So thank you so much to Waterkeeper for working with us on this project. Hi, I'm Liz from Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. Are you an avid gardener with a green thumb? Or are you new to gardening and looking for some help? Our Western New York guide to native plants for your garden can be helpful to all. This guide focuses on native plants that could be used in a variety of different gardens. Native plants to Western New York have evolved to the conditions in our ecosystem. They've also co-evolved native flora and fauna and are valuable and important resources for food and wildlife habitat. Native plants often require less maintenance and water. Read more about the benefits to native plants in our guide and leaf through over 90 different varieties of plants native to Western New York. There are example garden designs in the back of the book to give you some fun ideas. By planting more native plants, you can help improve the health and sustainability of local Western New York ecosystems. Hi everybody, Ron Zietz from Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. I'm out at one of our Ellicott Creek reforestation planting sites. And while I was out here today, I found this uh, American beech that's in need of an uh, emergency replanting. So although today's probably not the ideal time to plant a tree, uh, typically you want to do that in the fall or early spring. The first thing I'm going to do is find where I want to plant the tree. Call 811 dig make sure there's no underground uh, utilities that you uh, could damage while you're digging. And you also want to look up and make sure there's no power lines or other obstructions in your way. I want to remove the sod that's going to be around my tree. Uh, the grass, the roots from the grass and the sod are going to compete with the tree's roots and it's going to make it harder for it to get the water and the nutrients that the tree needs. So we want to eliminate some of that competition by removing the sod uh, from around the tree. So uh, you should try to clear out a spot. It's about a two foot radius from the center of the tree. To kind of get you started, so you can kind of see how it peels back. So I'm gonna remove that section. Well, you can see I removed a little more than an inch so some of this is really good dirt right here that I'm going to want to use to fill back in around my tree. So I'm just going to break that off. You can use a little hand trowel if you'd like. Again, just to kind of remove some of that good dirt. Here I have my circle with all the sod removed. And we have our tree that's going to be going into this hole. Uh, as you can see, this was a container grown tree. Uh, a lot of the roots grew in a circular pattern because they couldn't bust through the sides of the plastic. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to free up some of these roots. Uh, you can even cut some of the ones if they're already growing into a circle. We want to free up as many of these little hair-like uh, roots that we have. Because those are the ones that are going to spread out throughout the dirt and get all the nutrients and all the water that the rest of the tree needs. So the first thing we're going to do is try to kind of gently massage this root ball and free up all these guys. We're going to place the tree in our hole. Try to figure out the size and depth of our hole. So for the size of our hole, we want it to be two to three times the size of our root ball um, and just about as deep. So by putting it in here, we can kind of mentally figure out how large we want our hole to be. 
and then we're going to remove the tree. So we're definitely wide enough where all the roots are going to fit nice in here and are going to be able to be spread out. Um, to test for depth, it's very important again that you don't plant your trees too deep into the ground. Again, if you do that, you're burying all this root system and it's not going to be able to get the oxygen that it needs. So a good way to measure to see if you're deep enough or if you're too deep is to use what's called the root flare on the tree. So you can see this area on the trunk here, right where the roots kind of start to branch off from the main trunk. It's a lot thicker here. So our hole is completely backfilled in now with that nice dirt that we removed and broke up a little bit. So now the roots have nice uh, softer soil that they can work their way through. Our next step is we want to add some mulch to the tree. Uh, mulch helps again keep the grass and the roots out of our, our trees and root area. So again giving it kind of just a little bit of a leg up on out competing the roots of the grass. Uh, the wood chips also help to keep moisture in uh, the root area. So when we add water or when it rains, uh, the moisture will be collected in this area and the wood chips help keep it moist. We don't want to pile mulch up the side of the tree trunks. Uh, so we don't want mulch volcanoes. We want actually a little bit of a ring around the trunk about three inches all the way around the trunk of the, the tree where there is no mulch. So, I love donuts so we want donuts no volcanoes. water you can lightly very lightly tamp down that's going to help compress that soil and get rid of any of those air pockets you want to be really gentle again you don't want to damage the roots we don't want to make the soil too firm so that the roots can't find their way through it our waters and surrounding ecosystems for the benefit of future and current generations. Here in Western New York, we are so lucky to have ample freshwater resources. From the Great Lakes to small tributaries and ponds, we all need to do our part to be waterway protectors. Buffalo Niagara Water Keeper engages in large scale projects and shoreline restorations to work on our waterways and ensure their health and protection. However, there are many small ways that individuals and homeowners can do their part as well. Today, I'm going to outline two ways that homeowners can help protect our local waterways. By disconnecting your home's downspout, or if possible, installing a rain barrel, you can help protect our local waterways. When it rains, the water will run over the Earth's surface, carrying with it sediment, debris, 
and other pollutants. This water will run off towards low points on the Earth's surface. This is sometimes a local waterway, like a stream, or sometimes a storm drain. This is what we call storm water runoff. Storm water runoff can also come from your home's property. Think about when it rains and falls on a driveway or a sidewalk. That water will run off somewhere, most likely into your lawn or into the street towards the storm drain. When it rains on top of your house, the water will hit your roof and flow towards the gutters and eventually down the downspout. Often these downspouts are connected to a pipe underground that leads to your municipality's sewage line. Depending on your area, you may be connected to a combined sewer system or a separate sewer system. In separate systems, the wastewater from your homes will go directly to the treatment plant. Stormwater from roads and from your home's downspouts will be discharged directly into local waterways, often untreated. In combined systems, the stormwater will go into the same underground infrastructure as the sewage from your homes and local businesses. During dry weather events, all of this water will go directly to the treatment plant. However, in heavy rain events, the system underground is often overwhelmed, and by design, this water will overflow into local waterways, often bringing untreated sewage and other stormwater debris. As you can see, the rainwater from your home can make an impact on local waterways. Now add up all the homes on your block, in your whole town. That's a big impact on our local waterways. First, get familiar with your home's downspouts. Are they connected into the sewage system? If so, you can consider disconnecting them. This means you will be directing the water into your lawn or garden and allowing it to soak into the ground. There are many attachments available to direct the water further away from your home. Inspect during a rainfall to ensure the rainwater is staying on your property and not flowing into the street and down into a storm drain and entering the stormwater system. Note, if you are not the homeowner, you will need permission to modify your downspout. Another option is installing a rain barrel. This allows you to collect the rainwater to use later on. By collecting rainwater, you can save money on your water bill and decrease pollution. Let's learn more. You can use rainwater in place of tap water for watering indoor and outdoor plants, cleaning off tools, or other outdoor chores. Rainwater is also free of fluoride and chlorine, so your plants will enjoy it. A rain barrel may help you with your garden, but also helps reduce the flow of stormwater runoff, protecting local waterways. There are different types of rain barrels, ones that you can purchase that come equipped with all the pieces you would need, or there are ways to make your own rain barrel. If you are constructing your own rain barrel, be sure to learn what the barrel was used for before you use it to store water. Rain barrels sold by Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper hold 60 gallons of water. They come with mesh that will be placed underneath the lid towards the top, which helps prevent debris from entering the barrel and will keep insects out from laying eggs. It also comes with a spigot to be used at the bottom. For mine, I use it to fill up my watering can. You can often attach a hose to this spigot. The barrels also come with an overflow valve, which will be placed towards the top of the barrel. If the barrel fills up during a heavy rain, water will come out of this overflow valve. I have attached a soaker hose to mine to direct the water towards nearby plantings. One additional piece you will need is a diverter. This will direct the water from the path of the downspout into your barrel. Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper sells two different types of diverters. There's a small diverter and a large diverter. The small diverter fits most residential downspouts that are up to 3.5 inches wide. To install a diverter, like the ones sold by Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper, 
you will need to cut through your downspout. To do so, you can use a hacksaw, reciprocating saw, or tin snips. Once you determine the location for your rain barrel, you will need to modify the downspout. Before you cut the downspout, ensure that your rain barrel is in the proper location. Do you have it up on cinder blocks? Do you plan to build a wooden platform to elevate it? I have mine on cinder blocks so that I can easily fit my watering can under my spigot. Be sure to place your rain barrel in its final location before measuring and cutting your downspout. Before cutting your downspout, it's helpful to draw yourself some guidelines. The top of the downspout will fit inside of the diverter. The bottom section of the diverter will fit inside of your downspout. You can see that in the video here. You will cut out a smaller section of downspout than the entire length of the diverter. There are small tabs with screw holes to attach to your downspout to keep the diverter snug. It is important to remember that during heavy rain, your rain barrel may fill up and water will start to gush from the overflow valve. It's good practice to attach a hose to the overflow and direct it away from your home or foundation. After large rains, inspect your rain barrel for debris that may have washed in from your roof. Having mosquito mesh underneath your lid helps to trap that debris from getting into your barrel. It is also good practice to drain your barrel once a month to prevent any algae from growing inside. Remember, your barrel is very heavy, so using a hose for this step will be very helpful. Before winter and freezing temperatures begin, be sure to empty your barrel and move indoors if your space allows. If you have to store outdoors, store your barrel upside down and put a small weight on top of it. You do not want to let water get into the barrel and freeze. The water will freeze, expand, and crack your barrel. Close the diverter for the winter. Reinstall your barrel come next spring when temperatures warm up. 